Hi, I'm Bob Tabor, and in this series of videos, over 75 videos, I'm going to demonstrate how to build apps that can be sold or downloaded for free on the Windows Store for Windows desktop or phone or wherever universal Windows platform apps can be used, which uh, will soon include devices like the Xbox One, the Microsoft Hub, and even the HoloLens. Now that term, Universal Windows Platform, I just used, it describes tools and APIs that you can utilize to build apps that run universally across all new Windows devices. And the beauty is that you can write one application uh, and it will look great on many different screen resolutions and device form factors. And really that's one of the most important things that I'm going to discuss and demonstrate in this series of lessons. So this series is intended for an absolute beginner audience. Having said that, you should already have some familiarity with C Sharp and Visual Studio, and I'm going to assume that you're watching this after making sure that you've either watched or at least you understand all the concepts that I discuss in the C Sharp Fundamentals for Absolute Beginner series on Microsoft Virtual Academy and Channel 9. You can find it at this URL on screen. Now, if you're already an experienced developer, then fair warning, quite honestly here, this course is gonna move very slow for you. And we did that on purpose. And honestly, there's probably some better resources out there where you can spend your time. I'd recommend that you watch Andy Wigley and Shen Chuan uh, in a series that they created called uh, A Developer's Guide to Windows 10. Great, up-to-date, it's awesome. And I'd recommend you start there if you're already an experienced developer. Now, this is the fourth version of this particular video series that I've created. Uh, and I started way back on the Windows Phone 7 in about 2009, 2010. Each time that I release a version of this series, uh, I'm asked a few questions repeatedly. So I want to answer those right up front so that there's no, uh, there's no misunderstanding. First of all, you must use Windows 10 to build apps for Windows 10, to build Universal Windows Platform apps. You cannot use Windows 8.1 or Windows 8 or Windows 7 or Windows XP, <laughs> all right? You have to use Windows 10, that's number one. Number two, you have to use Visual Studio 2015. Now, I recommend that you use Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition, which is a free edition with all the features of the Pro Edition, but it's intended for individuals who are just learning or creating uh, community-based projects. Now, frankly, you can use other editions of Visual Studio, but not previous versions. You must use version 2015 to build Universal Windows Platform apps. So that's number two. Number three, you're going to see me use the, uh, the, the phone emulator in order to run and test my applications occasionally. It looked like a little phone running on my screen with a little menu off to the right hand side. Uh, it's actually running software called Hyper-V, which is a, uh, a platform for running virtual machines on your desktop. Uh, and so it's running the Windows Phone 10 operating system in a little virtual machine that looks like a phone. Now, you might need special hardware to run the phone emulator, specifically your motherboard and your, and your chip must support a technology called SLAT, or rather second level address translations. Now, most modern motherboards will support this, however, not all motherboards and chips support this. Most importantly, I can't help you with this. I very, uh, I, I understand very little about it. If you get errors during install of Visual Studio 2015, then you can search Microsoft's forms for help. Uh, but again, I can't help you. I've tried to help in the past, and honestly, I've probably confused more people than I've actually helped. Now, the worst case scenario, if you can't get uh, the emulator running on your local machine, is that you might need to deploy uh, your apps to a physical phone device running uh, either the full edition or beta edition of Windows Phone 10 for the purpose of testing. It's simple to do, however I don't demonstrate how to do that in this series of videos. There are articles online that will show you how. Now, if you have all these things in place, then number four, you're going to need to turn on developer mode. And the way that you get that is you open up settings uh, in Windows 10 and you go to update and security 
And then on the left hand side you select four developers and then make sure to choose developer mode and if it asks you to save then go ahead and save uh, I'm not sure I can't remember that particular part but make sure that you have that set Visual Studio will probably give you an error when you ever you first run an application if you don't have that setting set up okay now this series of videos is about 15 or 16 hours long it's fairly comprehensive uh, and one of the most important new features of this training series is that I'm going to give you homework assignments called challenges and I'll give you all the tools that you need to build an app to my specifications and then I'm even going to give you the solution to the challenge in the form of a video in case you get stuck and uh, that's a great way for you and you should definitely do these challenges in order to get your hands dirty in the code as I like to say we're also going to build a little cheat sheet for review purposes and then you can reference it after you finish this series of videos uh, feel free to add to the cheat sheet anything that you think might be useful as you go forward and start building your own applications and then finally in the last half of the series we're going to build four entire applications and even submit one of them for inclusion in the Windows Store now these apps are going to show you how to think like an app developer from concept through implementation and uh, we'll use a variety of different techniques and APIs and tools and approaches to learn how to interact with sensors on a given device uh, how to access media libraries how to access online services that provide weather updates uh, and even allow us to tap into fun services like Marvel Comics web API that allow us to retrieve back all their characters and, and look through them and look through the artwork now many of the videos uh, in the series will have a zip file associated with them that contains the code that I wrote while recording the video or in the case of challenges like I just described a moment ago it'll contain the images that you need any instructions or any other files that will be required in order to actually perform that challenge now the file will be on the page where you're currently watching the the video or where you originally downloaded the video from so please before you ask in the comments I can't find the download link where's the download link the download link uh, please hit control F on your keyboard in your web browser and search for the term download if there's no link to download a file then that particular video does not have files to download please search for the term download first uh, now while this is a very inclusive uh, set of videos I mean 15 to 16 hours is a lot of content uh, to go through this is still really just an introduction I can't possibly show you everything uh, that the universal Windows platform contains uh, you should treat this as a general introduction only but you should always refer back to Microsoft's own documentation at the Windows Dev Center for a comprehensive explanation of how to get the most out of the Universal Windows platform and you can access that at dev.windows.com now remember that you can't just watch a screencast tutorial training series the way that you would watch a movie or a sitcom on TV you're gonna to need to become an active learner don't be afraid to rewind or even rewatch an entire video or a portion of the video at first if it, at first something doesn't really make a lot of sense to you okay or look at the documentation on the Windows Dev Center at the link I just shared with you uh, uh, for more details surrounding the given topic that we're discussing at that moment in the videos you learn best whenever you l use different modalities uh, to learn the same idea the same content uh, and ultimately the videos that I'm presenting are just one tool to help you realize your aspirations of building apps for sale in the Windows Store now on a personal note if you like what I do here please visit me at http colon slash www.learnvisualstudio.net where I help beginners get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies uh, there are tons of challenge exercises there and deeper insights into writing software using Visual Studio and C Sharp and ASP.NET and more right. now finally I'd like to take a moment and thank the hundreds of 
thousands of people who have watched the previous versions of this series. And for those who took the time to actually tell Microsoft that you wanted more of this type of training, uh, your feedback made this happen. So thank you very much. Also, I want to thank Andy Wigley, who patiently answered uh, all of the questions that I had and gave me a ton of advice while I was building this series. I'm very thankful for his guidance as I worked on these lessons. And ultimately, this series was championed primarily by Clint Rutkus, who has been involved in almost all of the video projects that I've worked on for Microsoft. Without Clint, none of this would be possible. So please reach out to him on Twitter and let him know how much you appreciate his good work. Okay, so enough setup. You've got Visual Studio 2015 running on uh, Windows 10, and you've turned on developer mode in settings like we looked at just a moment ago, and you're wondering what comes next. Well, we're going to get started in the very next video. We'll see you there. Thank you.